When the profession was founded in the 1940s by the federal government, we could have continued to declare ourselves as applied psychologists, trying to do some kind of counseling with troubled people and not embrace the medical model. But there was great fear that we could not compete. If people could go and see uh, physicians or psychiatrists under their health plans, and about 80% of it would be paid by this very liberal health insurance that existed in the 40s and 50s, then why would anybody go see a psychologist and have to pay out of pocket for it? So those of us who are in the leadership of this young profession started to fight for the right to be get included in health care plans. We thought that that was the only way we could guarantee that the profession would continue to flourish and grow and take up its rightful place in the culture. And I think we sold our soul to the devils. That's what we did. It was a I, I always want to expiate that error I made and the sin I feel that I committed by joining that movement to make that happen. Yeah, so that's, that's such a... a uh, in a way, a strange thing to hear from somebody who for many years was so prominent in APA. Well, I was prominent in APA, but I changed my tune when I began to reflect Did you? <laughs> ways that I'm thinking about. Did you I, raise some hell in APA? Pardon me? Did you raise some hell in APA? I did. I, I was even a part of a task force on uh, trying to change psychiatric nomenclature. I was part of a task force on exploring how psychologists could get out of the healthcare system and uh, establish itself once again with its older identity as applied psychologists rather than as healthcare providers. We had to declare ourselves as healthcare providers in order to get the insurance reimbursement. And that, that was horrible. And I think we made a terrible mistake. It did good things short term. Professional schools were founded. There was a great cultural demand uh, to participate in this enterprise and students showed up in huge numbers and the culture did recognize us and provide slots for us in public and private settings and in independent practice but gradually we saw as i said we had sold our souls to the devil and the insurance companies uh, third-party payers gradually have taken away our autonomy and now dictate to us what kinds of work we should do and who's going to get paid what for what.